Hello. Um, I'm still a little confused on certain things like um, the fact that we are unlimited infinite beings. Why does it matter, say, like what we eat, like organic food or inorganic food? Um, it wouldn't matter if there were not conflicts within you. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's, it, it, isn't, it isn't you getting out of sync with other physical things. It's you out of sync with you. Mm -hmm. it, it's when you, have, when you have desires that your beliefs challenge, there's vibrational discord within you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so should we, does it, would it be better for us to eat organic foods, not drink alcohol, not smoke cigarettes? Well, it depends on, it depends on the amount of air time, thinking time that you've given. In other words, mm -hmm. let's step back a little and then we'll come into the specifics of this. Mm -hmm. So you follow the, the idea or the, the basic philosophy that we are presenting here that there are two aspects of you that are playing off of themselves, off of each other all the time. There's this non-physical energy, <coughs> eternal part of you, and then there's what you're allowing in any moment in time. Mm -hmm. So in an ideal world, from our perspective, in every moment, you would be so sensitive to the way you feel that when you think a thought that feels off, you just say, oh, that's off. Let me see if I can find one that feels a little better. In the same way that you finely tune your radio dial rather than listening to static. Mm -hmm. In the same way that you, that you care about anything with some precision. It's a, a determination to feel good, so a determination to adjust the thought until you get it into sync. Mm -hmm. But most people have not been sensitive to their emotions, and so they've practiced thoughts by virtue of other standards. Instead of using the standard of how in alignment I am with this, which means how, how close I am to who I really am, how up to speed I'm staying with who life has caused me to become. Let's say this another way. Your source energy, you come forth part of you into this body. You bang around like you knew you would, leading edge creative genius that you are. You know what you don't want. You know what you do want. And every time you know what you do want, that larger part of you morphs into that improved condition. Mm -hmm. So through your life, you are causing the larger part of you to become. The question is, are you keeping up with what you've become? And your emotions are your indicator of whether you are or not. So in an ideal world, from our perspective, the perfect creative experience would be, would be to be in human form and so sensitive to emotion that if a thought feels a little off, that you recognize that it's off. Esther will stop. Jerry will say, what's up? And Esther will say, something's off. I'm just trying to work it into alignment. In other words, sometimes she's more sensitive than others. Sometimes she goes headlong into thoughts that she very well knows are off and she just doesn't care because she's invested in the subject. But sometimes there's a feeling of sensitivity. I want to get this into a better feeling place. And if someone could be in human form and could care enough about how you feel and could be disciplined enough to choose the thought that feels best, mm -hmm. then you would always be in a place of singular attraction and the world would be your oyster. People watching you would say, how do you do this? You barely state an idea of something you want and heaven and earth parts and moves in order to bring it about for you. Mm -hmm. Who's got your number in high places that is working on your behalf? have. That would be the effect that others would see in your experience. So, in an ideal world, deliberate aligning of thought. But, if you've been living in a world and in a body and in an attitude and in a personality and in a behavior and in a mood where you're thinking this and you're thinking that, you've kind of been sloppy about your thinking, and instead of using the criteria of am I aligned with source as your reason for thinking, you use other things like, well, is it true? Did that really happen? Do a lot of people think that? Did something go wrong? In other words, humans use all kinds of criteria as their reason for focus other than is it taking me to who I really am? So as they've developed these patterns of thought, a thought that you keep thinking, we're calling it first an activated vibration. 
If you keep doing it, it's a dominantly activated vibration. You could say it's a chronic thought. A chronic thought or an often activated vibration is what a belief is. Mm -hmm. It's a habit or pattern of thought. So if I have habits or patterns of thought that are not in sync with who I've really become, then I have a chronic discord that's going on within me. So the way we would approach it, if we were standing in your physical shoes, we're not off the topic, it just sounds like it. We're going to bring it right back around to the specifics of what you're talking mm -hmm. about. In the ideal world, you'd think and feel. Feel and think, think and feel, feel and think. And you'd stay in sync, stay in sync, stay in sync, stay in sync. And thrive and thrive and thrive and thrive and thrive. But there's nothing wrong with, in the same way that we're encouraging you to find a thought that feels better, to find a behavior that feels better, to find a food that feels better. And in the same way, you have to kind of feel around for the thought until you figure out if it fits. Sometimes you have to feel around for the food until you figure out if it fits. And what's it fitting with? Now let's talk about this. So let's say that you were young, you were out there eating, you were having experiences, you were putting things in your body and you were having responses to them. Let's say, oh here, this is a fun way. Let's say you took a drug and you got high and you released resistance and you really liked it. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you put into your vortex, I want to feel this non-resisted, high-flying feeling of omnipotence. Because if you ever had that experience, that's what you put into your vibrational escrow. So it's over there. The source within you is holding that vibration, remembering that that's what you wanted. Let's say you ate something. Let's say for a period of time you lived in a place where everything that they fed you was the same sort of thing. There wasn't much balance in your diet, but you didn't know about diet. So you weren't, you weren't thinking any negative thoughts about it. You were just eating what they provided for you. Mm -hmm. But let's say your tail was sort of dragging. It wasn't, you didn't feel energized by it. It wasn't the kind of food that your body really wanted. And so you weren't clear-minded, which means you asked for greater clarity. Let's say you didn't feel vitality, so you asked for greater vitality. That's the way contrast always works. So without even knowing about the four food groups or about what kind of things you were eating or about how much of anything was in it, without even knowing any of that, you were having your personal scientific laboratory experience where you were eating and having emotional and physical responses to it and you were vibrational asking for improvement, 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 improvement. Mm -hmm. You were. Mm -hmm. So without even knowing it, you gave your source energy through trial and error, so to speak. There is no error, but through, for, through living of life, you told your source energy under what conditions you were optimi optimizing and thriving and under what conditions you were not. You gave that information vibrationally out there ahead of you. And now, source is holding that, is holding that vibration and calling you to it. Now, if you care about the way you feel and you've, you're deliberately thinking thoughts that feel good, in that alignment, you feel joyful, you feel fascination, you feel vitality. And under those aligned conditions, you would feel an impulse to eat the foods that through life you had shown your vibrational inner being source were the best for you. You get how this works? In other words, you wouldn't need to read a book about what combinations of foods are good for you. You wouldn't need to know what vitamins or minerals or fibers or any other thing were in them. You wouldn't need to know that in terms of someone else's description because you've been eating them, you've been having responses to them, you've been putting forth vibrational requests for them, and the source within you knows how to help you thrive. Mm -hmm. But what happens to most people is they don't get happy enough and stay happy enough consistently enough to hear the message of impulse that's coming from that perspective. This is leading edge stuff, folks. We've never taken nutrition or diet or m metabolism to this far vibrational place before. Mm -hmm. Can you feel it? In other words, when you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on, the things that appeal to you, the things that occur to you, are the things that work, the things that are the best for you. But what happens with so many, almost everybody questions almost everything that you do. 
because you haven't consistently maintained your alignment with source energy. You haven't stayed joyously happy long enough to really get your footing, to really know. And so, and so as a result, you look to other sources as your reason to do the things you do. Now this takes us back to the conversation that we had earlier about what's the difference between the emotional guidance that you're listening to and the intellectual guidance. You could read so many books and you have, we're surprised any of you can find anything to eat. <laughs> because somebody has written a book about all of it. Yeah. It's off in this way, it's off in this way, it's off, come this way, come this way, come this way, come this way, don't do this, don't do this. That's illegal, that's legal, eat that, don't eat that. In other words, you're jerked around in every direction because you're intellectually trying to sort it out, where if you would emotionally sort it out, if you would emotionally sort it out, you would be guided right to what your life has shown you that you thrive on in all fronts. Best ever. Best so, ever. I mean, if I just feel naturally inspired to go have a few beers with my friends, yes, that's a good yes, thing, right? Yes, yes, I mean, yes. I should do it. But, but. but here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you have been tuned in, tapped in, turned on, if you're stim- if, if, if you're like so many people who are going to have some beers because life has been beating up on you and you're mm-hmm. looking for relief, then you're... you're, you're Introducing the beer to your system, yeah. not from a place of alignment. Mm-hmm. And so you can't trust the guidance that comes from a place of trying to fix something that's broken. Yeah. That's why we say you have to consistently get to a place of feeling high and happy and mm-hmm. eager about life before you can really trust those impulses about eating. Now here, you're really going to like this. So let's just lay this out. I've been talking about the emotional guidance scale a little bit, and while we're not too eager to talk with you about emotions as such, we would rather that you just think about one emotion, and that's the emotion of relief. In other words, the emotion that feels a little better than where I am. But let's, let's talk about this scale, and here is joy and love and, and feelings of vitality and appreciation, and here is despair and fear and everything else in between. So... Let's say you're someone, you're not, but let's say you're someone who's hanging around in feelings of powerlessness and fear and, and, and most things, that's where your vibrational set point sort of ends up. Sometimes you get mad and you're certainly resentful, not you, we're just using this as an example, and so you're hanging around in that vibration. It is chartable, it is provable there is evidence everywhere that people who chronically hang around in that vicinity have specific illnesses that are the indicators that they're hanging around in that vicinity in other words a chronic vibrational attitude of despair and fear brings diseases that match that while overwhelmment brings diseases that match that And joy, listen to the careful choosing of this word, joy brings diseases that match that. Only on the joy end, we can't call it disease, we must call it ease. So there's ease disease, ease disease, ease disease. You get how it works? And you are as diseased as you are not eased, and you are as eased as you are not diseased. You get it? In other words, there's allowing and there's resisting. And so here's this sliding scale. And it is chartable. In other words, if you spent time looking at autopsies... <laughs> wanted to get your attention with that drama (laughs) and then personalities and behaviors and moods from the people that knew them you'd be able to see the accuracy of that so now so so do you accept that so so what about this so so we've got this chart laid out and let's say you figure out where you hang out on the chart layers of that chart will show you we could show you what traffic patterns are around you, depending on where you hang out. We could show you what relationships you have with other people, depending upon where you hang out. We could show you your economic achievement, depending upon where you hang out. In other words, everything that is reflected in your life is understandable by virtue of where you hang out and the stuff you choose to eat, too. The stuff you choose to eat. 
to. The better you feel, the more you are inspired to the food that the source within you has gleaned from living in your body makes you thrive. It's just that simple.